Today I'm going to show you some techniques that I use to, uh, or some methods rather, uh, that I use to make my kick drums. Any kick drum sounds good, more or less. It depends what kind of track you want to make. And uh, since the kick drum is such a central piece of uh, dance music, it's uh, usually a tricky thing to nail and uh, important. If you have a kick drum that doesn't really fit the track, you know, it can sound pretty shaky. And uh, many times uh, when we start uh, making music, at least in my case, I start with the kick drum, so every uh, subsequent piece is kind of fitted to match the kick drum anyways. Uh, but uh, sometimes um, I also make music uh, reversely by putting the kick drum last, which can be a, a cool exercise. With that in mind, I'm going to show you some like basic guidelines and techniques from which you can basically make it sound uh, nice in any case. So I've loaded a kick drum here from some Ether Mechanics uh, track. So we will have a listen. I made like a 4-4 loop. It's a very deep kick. So the first thing is to check the tuning. And we see here that it's 41. And this is uh, pretty low. Most sound systems, uh, they can't really play much lower than 40. So riding on that breaking point can be an issue sometimes. It, it works, but uh, primarily if you want it to sound like really good at a PA system, we try to play it around 50. So let's see how that sounds. So we can go in here and we can uh, transpose it. 48, like that's the sweet spot, I think usually around 50, 48, 50. But let's listen if we go down. And this is of course a creative choice, so you have to pick whatever sound you want. But usually, like in most cases, I aim at 48 hertz with my kick drums and then I play with the timbre. It depends also a bit on the BPM or what kind of style of music that you're making. For instance, uh, if you're making like dub techno stuff, you know, uh, deeper kick drums fit very well. 48, like just to demystify one thing for uh, new producers. Like if you start by putting your kick drums at 48, like if you don't want to get stuck and then from there you can experiment. The next thing is the sustain. Depending on like what baseline you have and what kind of boomy sound you want uh, on your on your track, you can really like shape the kick like this. So I use that a lot. Usually I tune the kick, and then I like pull down the sustain a bit until it sounds like tight and punchy. Right, and then some EQ can be helpful. What you can do is you can put a high pass filter and you can kind of boost it around whatever frequency it is that you want to emphasize. And since we are then shelving off at the low end, we are creating some space for the bass line and emphasizing the punch of the kick. And then, uh, good in general, I find in when we are EQing. We kind of want to make a little dip around where we are boosting or uh, vice versa. Uh, but to be honest, I don't usually do this myself, but it's definitely a good method, I think. This kind of cl cleans up the dirty, how do you say it? I will play it, then you will hear it. That kind of boxy sound. In here it's a bit more pronounced, a bit more boomy in, in a good way. If that's what you want, and you can see also here that the fundamental of the kick drum. But you can experiment, I think, here from 200 to about 500. You can really reshape the timbre of the kick drum, but usually a dip around 200 sound good. Again, I'm giving you guidelines here. There's a lot of relativism <laughs> within in, within music production. It, it depends, use your ears and all of that. It can be very frustrating when you are starting out to making music. So I will try to give you 
very simple guidelines here. It's not the truth. It's not the only thing. There are like some simple thing that works a lot. Not always. And of course, this is a creative thing. Like uh, I think art and uh, being creative in general is um, it's about breaking rules, you know. So it's much more fun to break rules when you actually know them or have or have any to break. <laughs> so I'm giving you some rules here that are pretty nice and work well. And then uh, I'm looking forward to hear how you break them, right? So let's say we are happy with this kick drum. And it's a pretty, um, how do you say? Uh, muffled and uh, filtered, it's very low kick. What we can do to add some character is some click on the kick. So we find the kick drum with a bit more overtones, like harmonic content. Like that one, for instance, we just pop it here. And now I have routed it so that this MIDI goes in here. So MIDI from kick two in. So now it will play at the same time. And I filter out the low end because we have the low end from this one and we will have the click from this one. And I pull back the filter here, if we listen. And we play them together. And this will help the kick drum to punch through the mix later when we have a lot of other sounds. And if we have a bit of smack on the kick, it will help to punch through. And we can even automate this within the track. Like we could start the track like this. And then eventually, like when we are getting more elements in, we could automate it. Just to break through or whatever. We just play it like this through the whole thing, whatever you want. Cool. And then if we want to add maybe some bass. And one thing to make uh, kick and bass sound good together, uh, which can be a craft in itself. But one simple thing is just simply to make sure that they are not sounding at the same time. Then it's much easier to uh, make a clean sounding mix. So for instance, now we have a 4-4 beat. You can do it like this to even show them at the same time. Let's see. There you have the kick drums. And here I can add the bass. So here I simply just add the bass now. It's a very simple demonstration. So the kick drum is sounding here and then the bass is sounding afterwards. Right? And then we can do what's called the bass sandwich. <laughs> when we scoop the, uh, the frequencies of the bass line where, so for instance here, we have the fundamental of the kick drum around 48, so we scoop a bit. Because then the, uh, the punch of the kick drum will, will be heard more, because otherwise if, they ha if you have a sonic content on the same frequency at the same time, they will be blended. So if you kind of cut away from one of them, the other will be more pronounced. And this way, for instance, if you're listening in a big system, you will feel the punch of the kick drum rather than it being kind of phased out because the bass line is hitting at the same time and creating issues. And then you give them each some room. So for instance, now I am cutting a bit of the 48-ish hertz and I'm leaving the, the low end. So I cut away the low end on the kick drum so that this has a, a bit more cleaner area to sound. Uh, and then I remove some bass so that the kick drum can punch through here. And then I removed some of the 200s from the kick drum and then I can add a bit of 200 from the, from the bass line. And that kind of creates a sandwich. <laughs> I guess. So they, they are kind of feeling, giving each other space, which uh, solidifies their unity as they're playing together in a big sound system. And then we can add a bit of harmonics. Of course, we can add sidechain compression, put it on, and the 
kick drum. kick drum. Now we can glue it together with a compressor if we want. And here if we increase the attack time, the more of the transients of the kick drum and we will preserve and kind of emphasize because the, the, the longer it takes for the compressor to start compressing uh, the signal, uh, the more of the transient it lets through, all right? Sometimes you want to do it gently, sometimes you want to smash it. saturation so let's have a look at the levels here it's 939 without it and 26 is basically not we can add like some drive a bit of bass and uh, some um, uh, some character we can even add an amp pretty extreme but I mean for some genres this sounds really dope right so you add a bit more punch to it with the amp I mean, this is really really cool uh, never mind this one I think that basically everything that I wanted to show you to be honest yeah, one thing I want to mention about uh, compression is that you kind of, you, you don't really need it. Uh, a lot of uh, people, they don't use compression on their kick drum at all. And like, you, you, you don't need it, especially if you're uh, synthesizing or have control of the, of the envelope. You can kind of shape the kick in a way, but don't forget the factor of it being a lot of fun to use compressors so even if you don't need to use a compressor and someone tells you that why are you using compression like just don't care about these people uh, if you think it's fun to use compressors then you should do it okay so uh, with that said i want to show some advanced techniques so let's say we want to create some space here with the in the baseline if I can find them. I'll use the isotope because I I like it. So what I can do, for instance, here we have the now we have the uh, the, the bass line it has a lot of overtones, let's say. And if I create this kind of ducking that I showed you earlier, I will pay for you. If we do this kind of ducking, the whole bass line will be ducked, right? What we can do if we only want to make space for the low end, we can use a, a, a multi-band compressor. And you see here, we only uh, trigger the uh, the band here. So we take the kick here. So you see here, comes the kick. So now we are only uh, side-chaining the low end. While we are still hearing the 
harmonics. It's a big difference between that and this. But we're still having the ducking of the bass. Yeah. Cool. And what we also can do, um, I'll just remove all of it and we will add the neutron equalizer and all of these techniques work on most uh, VSTs or units that uh, have uh, sidechain options. So for instance here now we can also use the dynamic mode so let's say uh, we put the, this uh, band here at the fundamental of the kick drum for instance and we put it in dynamic mode uh, and we trigger it externally, external band one, and we use the kick drum. So when the kick drum hits, it I will be quiet and you can turn up the volume maybe with your headphones and really listen when I turn on this channel, you will hopefully hear how the punch of the kick drum just comes forward a bit, okay? So let's try it. could add this also on the kick drum to make room for the bass line when it's needed. So this is it, so kind of tuning the kick drum, uh, emphasizing the uh, fundamental or uh, uh, important parts of the kick drum, cleaning up some of the uh, low mids and bass frequencies and also I'll show you this also like here on the kick drum. Around 1K and 2K, this is usually like where the important parts of a regular kick drum, like in a, in a, in a drum kit, the beater, where, where it's kind of smacking against the skin when you're playing, it's around 1 to 2K. And if you want to add a bit of punch and make the kick drum punch up through your mix, you can add a bit of 1K and we can listen to what it sounds like. If your kick is sounding muddy and like, intrusive, usually I find that uh, cleaning up here in this area a bit uh, can really help to open up uh, the kick drum. And usually also an interesting thing about bass lines that's uh, often overlooked is that the like tactile character of the bass usually is in, the, in this area, actually. You might think that this is the bass, like this is the sugar that we all want and sure this kind of fills up the the groove of your track but the character of the bass line uh, many times is here so you uh, kind of want the bass line to fill out the kick drum here kind of and then the the, the punch of the kick uh, here and then you have the bass line's character coming in here in between the kick drum to give some cool tactile feelings and uh, character uh, and then uh, some of the sn uh, snap of the kick punches through the mix here. And then you have a very solid low end foundation. And now go have fun. Uh, and I'm uh, really looking forward to hear your incredible drum grooves.